This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. To find out how you can help kickstart our latest show live from Bay 6, visit our website and click on the Kickstarter icon. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris, and in the kitchen with me today is my dear friend Tracy. And Tracy just came back from a fabulous trip mm. to Costa Rica, and so she's going to share a recipe for flan de coco with us today. Well, flan's a traditional Latin American dessert, and you find it in Europe also, but when you have it as a coconut flan or a flan de coco, mm -hmm. that takes it right to Costa Rica. Perfect. Well, let's learn how to make that today. So we're going to start by talking about the um, pans that we're going to be using to make the flan in. So Tracy, what do you normally use at home? Uh, I use ramekins about this size, and I like it because I can see through them. Uh -huh. But in terms of uh, presentation for a dinner party, a or dinner party, like say yeah. where it's going to not be unplated, but uh -huh. it's going to be set aside for a while. This appeals to me more, where okay. you have the a little design yeah, on it. Some yeah, some nice design too. So um, if you're making the flan at home, um, this is like a Pyrex, we call it in the United States. This is about a half a cup. This is more like three quarters of a cup. So in the recipe, um, I'll have for you that if you use the three quarter cup ramekins, you'll get about six flan. If you go with the smaller half a cup, you'll get about eight. Now, Tracy, tell me what you found in Costa Rica, how they tend to make their flan. Well, it depended on where you were in country. If you were in uh, a primitive area, mm -hmm. they wouldn't think of trying to make little individual servings, okay. e even though it was restaurant presentation. They would make, they would just use this pan uh -huh. and cut it into usually like a uh, rectangle or a square, uh -huh. and it would end up plated in a nice fashion. You'd uh -huh. get it would still be pretty, but it wouldn't have the, the same elegance that we have with the individual ramekins. Great. So think about that. If you're making it just for your family at home, you could just go ahead and do what we're going to do in a large pan and use a spatula and scoop it out. But today we're going to dress it up and use the ramekins. So you like to cook it in a water bath? Oh, yes. Okay. Do you so know why? Tell me why. If you left this portion of the recipe out and uh -huh. just placed them at a high heat in the oven, they'd yeah. be like hockey pucks. Oh, they would get that solid. Oh, oh it's Oh, really? Very, very tough. And, okay. And I don't like my eggs cooked tough. So no, no. I certainly wouldn't want to have flan that tasted No, you want it like creamy, a brick. yeah. So um, we just go ahead, at this point, put the kettle on. Yes. And we'll get this nice and boiling. And then once it's time, we'll go ahead and add it um, to our big pan that we put in the oven. So we're going to go ahead and get our custard made. Now, um, Tracy's going to show us all the ingredients that go into it. You can either put them into a bowl or, you know, I love this large measuring cup because you can see when we go to pour it into the ramekins, it's really nice to have that little lip. So Tracy, we start with how many eggs? Six. Six eggs. Okay. Oh, cute little whisk. So you like to break up your yolks? I do. Yeah. What do you think? That looks pretty good. Okay. Okay. So now you put in a I can do. of sweetened condensed milk. And um, sweetened condensed milk is a milk that's been cooked down. It's got some sugar added to it. It's very, very thick. This is a 14 ounce can of it. So now we're going to add some half and half. So how do you go about doing that? So I just use the same can that I just emptied and just use that twice for the full amount. Okay, so Tracy has two kinds of uh, flavorings that she puts in. So you're going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla and then also a teaspoon of coconut extract. And this is really potent stuff, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it is. And like any extract, you don't really want to taste it right. by itself. But it's it gives strong. that nice coconut punch that this flan really has, yeah. And then for a little more sweetness, we're going to add about half a cup of sugar. Now we make the caramel for the 
the bottom when you're cooking it and it's the top when you're eating it. Okay, so let's learn how to make that. So we're over at the stove and Tracy's gonna show us how she makes her caramel. Now we're gonna use about a 10 inch um, skillet and we have this on a medium high heat. Okay, so we start by putting in some sugar. How much do you like to start with? I like using a full cup. Okay. And then the trick is to moisten, but not get so much water into the sugar that you have to cook it back off again. Okay. You'll see in a second what I mean by this. We'll start with maybe about three uh, teaspoons. Yeah, and about see a how tablespoon, that... three okay. teaspoons. Okay. But you want it to just be barely moistened. Okay, so it's sort of almost looking like wet sand. Exactly. Okay, so exactly. that's what we're going for. And the thing that you want to be very careful when you're doing this is to not let it burn. Right. So first time I did this, I did it on just high heat, uh -huh. and it turned black and started smoking almost immediately. So you thought, this is not what I'm this going for. This isn't a good this idea. This is what I had in Costa Rica. <laughs> no, no. Now the sugar's starting to melt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's starting to bubble a little bit. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Now here we go. Now it's starting to really cook. And here's the magical point. Right now, it's liquefying. It's, it really is reaching the temperature. But then you only have a few minutes. I think the maximum is I think it's a three to four minutes mm -hmm. before it turns into rock hard. That hard? Like a lollipop. Yeah, like a lollipop. Yeah. That's, That's good. Let's, okay. let's stop here. Okay. So our sugar is now totally liquid, and it's like a dark honey it color. So it. that's a really good guide. Think of honey. Okay, and then we just go ahead and divide that up into our six ramekins. Okay, so we've got our caramel in the bottom, so now we just fill them up yeah. with, the, with the custard. That's why you want to make sure you have this pre-made, because you would not want to wait and start making it now. Oh, that looks so great. And you just fill these guys up. Yes. Yeah, because they're not really going to... It's gonna, not going to boil over. And it's not going to raise too, too much, but oh, that looks great. So if you end up having a little extra, could you just put it in a container and... Uh, Yes. Bake it off the next day. And, Absolutely. And do you have to put the caramel? It wouldn't be a flan, but it would just be like a nice coconut custard, right? Yes, yeah. it's delicious that if you don't want to take that extra step. Yeah, okay, that's good to know. So we've preheated the oven to 325 degrees, and now Tracy's going to show us how she gets the hot water bath in with our ramekins. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and put this right into the oven. And then, and we, then I fill it up as far as I can. Halfway or more, up the ramekin. Up the side of the ramekin. Okay. And then we go ahead and we slide this in and we're going to let these cook for about 45 minutes. So when Tracy um, has her flan come out of the oven, because this is a flan de coco, she likes to put on a little toasted coconut. So she's going to show us how she does that next. So you start with about how much coconut? Uh, a cup. A cup of sweetened coconut. And um, we just have this in actually the same pan that we did the caramel in and we've got it on a medium high heat and um, boy you really want to keep this coconut moving don't mm, you Trace? I do otherwise it'll burn very quickly again it's got a lot of sugar and then um, as it starts to brown you may want to then lower your temperature just mm -hmm. a little bit because boy when it starts to brown it really starts to brown yes okay so Tracy's pulled the coconut off the heat, but because there's so much residual heat in the pan, she can keep stirring it. Oh, man, it tastes so good. <laughs> oh, it smells it's fabulous. It's fantastic. Mm. So you want to maybe keep stirring it for another minute or so until mm -hmm. it cools down, but mmm, that tastes so good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull these out of the oven. And again, be very careful because this is a lot of hot water. So now Tracy's going to go ahead and take some of that toasted coconut. But you did say you like to put it on while when the custard first comes out. I do think it's good because it it's going to sink down into the custard itself a little bit. A little bit. So we're going to go ahead and take our little flan de cocos out of the water bath. Now I'm using tongs and a little spatula. And you just slide that right onto the cooling rack. Now, Tracy, how long do you like to let these set about before you 
well, and mold them. If I'm serving them warm, mm -hmm. half an hour or so. Okay. And then if you were going to serve them chilled, you'd go ahead and get them to about room temp and then put them in the fridge? Exactly. Okay. And so if you were making these for a party, you could make them, say, in the morning and serve them that night? Easily. Easily. Go I ahead. often let them go overnight. Oh, overnight, even better. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and unmold our flan. These have been in the refrigerator for a few hours. So Tracy, how do you first start by unmolding them? You want a sharp knife, okay, and preferably no serrate, serrations on the side because you're going to be trying to go all the way around the edge and as close to the glass as you can. Okay, so Tracy is going to be unmolding one in a glass um, Pyrex and I'm going to be unmolding one in the porcelain and we just want to see how that works out. Well, okay, so we put the I love plate to on top. I like this. Flip. Okay. Sometimes you need the the, the warmth, uh, warmth of, it, of your hand to help it come down. Okay. Oh, yum. Look at that. It's like magic. It is magic. <laughs> Thought. Dislodge. There it is. Great. Oh, my God. Well, it's been so great having Tracy in the kitchen with me today. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Cindy. It's really fun to cook desserts and uh, all things. I'm telling you, I love it. Also, if you happen to um, either travel somewhere or you're from a country that has a special dessert that you'd like to share with me, please send me an email. You know, I love to try these things out. Now, if you want to try Tracy's Flan de Coco at home, just go to our website, go to the Sweet World show notes, and I'll have the recipe there for you. And as always, if you have any questions, please send me an email. We'll see you next time. Mm. Mm. So good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>